What is up, you beautiful carbon life forms? One question I get asked a lot is, Trevor, what software should I use to edit videos on my phone, my iPhone, my Android, whatever? And I just say something like, dude, I hate editing on my phone because all the software blows and it's like fat thumbs and stuff. But I found something actually at VidSummit that I kind of like, and it is now my favorite software for editing on your phone. It's no secret, it's in the title, it's Adobe Premiere Rush. In this video, I will tell you how to acquire it, why it's awesome, and I give you a full tutorial on how to use it. This is different than other tutorials that just go, here's what these buttons do. I'm gonna show you, here's what these buttons do, but then we're gonna create an entire, like a 45 second project, start to finish, so you're not wondering and scratching your head, okay, I got what that button is, but how do I use it? I'm gonna show you. Let's start with how to acquire it. If you have the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, which is $53 a month at the moment, that gives you all of Adobe's products and they're always upgraded and it's 53 bucks a month forever, which some people love, some people hate. That's what I have. I primarily use Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Photoshop and I have access to all the other applications they have as well. I sometimes jump into After Effects, but for me, business write-off, totally worth it. There's a link for the Adobe Creative Cloud below if you wanna get that and obviously it includes Adobe Premiere Rush. If all you want is Adobe Premiere Rush, you can get that for 10 bucks a month. If you want that, click down below. There's a link for that as well. Now, why do I like it? The main reason is because it works more like an actual professional video editing program like Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10 or DaVinci Resolve. The layout is pretty similar, even though it's on a smartphone or on a tablet. That's number one. Number two is because it is cross-platform. You can use that on iPhone, on Android, on Mac or PC. Number three is because you can upload your project to the Creative Cloud by checking a box and you can start it on your phone and you can finish it on your Mac or PC. It's like, what? It also has finer and more professional controls than a lot of the other video editing programs out there for your phone. So let's jump in right now and I'm gonna show you exactly what the interface looks like, what every button does, and then we're going to create a project start to finish. Let's rock. The first time you open Rush, you're going to see this screen. You'll create a new project by hitting create a new project. If this was the second time you opened Rush, you'd see your existing projects up here and you'd hit the plus sign. For now, we're gonna hit create new project. And the first time you open it, it's gonna show you the sample media. We don't want that. We want to use our own media. So we're gonna go back and hit camera roll and choose our own media. Now it will lay out the media in the order you select it. So you want to select it in the order that you want it to show up in your timeline, in your project. So we're gonna go in this order. If you mess up, you go, oh, I forgot, I wanted a different order. You can just uncheck and then recheck. So we want this to be seven, eight, nine. These are clips I shot with the camera app that is built into Premiere Rush. It's pretty cool, it gives you more robust features than you have with a native app, whether you're on an iPhone or an Android. You can do more stuff by recording it with Rush. That's how I shot this stuff. If you'd like me to create a video about that, let me know in the comments below. Notice here at the bottom it says Sync with CC, that's Creative Cloud. One of the things I love about Adobe Premiere Rush is that it will sync with your desktop version of the same program, so you can jump into the desktop version whether you're on a Mac or PC and continue and edit and jump back and forth. So that's pretty awesome. So we want that on. We also want to name our project. So we'll click there and choose rings because Coach Mike is going to show us how to do a muscle up on the rings. We hit return and we hit create. It'll take a second to import the media by preparing it. And boom, now we're ready to edit. Let me first talk about all of the different buttons and things you see on this screen. And when I'm done showing you what each of these things do, we're going to actually create a project start to finish. It'll be about 45, 50 seconds when it's done. I will speed up through certain parts when I'm doing things that I've already shown you how to do. But let's go ahead and cover each of these buttons. In the top left, you have home. Hit the home button and it shows you your projects. We have one project, we just created it, called Rings. To create a new project, hit that button on the bottom. To go back, you simply click on the project you wanna work on. Next, we have Sequence. So. Each one of these little things down here are clips. These are individual clips, but all of these together make up your sequence or your timeline. This sequence is called sequence, which is a terrible name. We wanna give it a name. Sometimes you'll wanna give it the same name as your project. Kinda of makes sense. So we'll hit this button next to the plus sign on the bottom left, and we will find our sequence. Now. That button on the bottom left shows us basically our project folder, all the assets in our project. These are all the clips I selected. There were nine of them, but look at this 10th thing. Oh, there's the sequence, sequence one. Terrible name, let's rename it by clicking on these little three dots. 
and we're gonna hit rename and let's delete that and we'll call it rings so it matches our project name you can call it whatever you want now another thing that you can do is duplicate a sequence why would you ever duplicate and have two of the same thing that's like you're edited cut. We interrupt this amazing tutorial for a word from our sponsor, me. I've got a free one hour video secrets masterclass at videosecretswebinar.com that will teach real estate agents and other entrepreneurs to grow their businesses using video. So please check it out as soon as you're done with this at videosecretswebinar.com. Back to you, Trevor. Why would you have multiple versions of that? One reason is you can create one version for YouTube and another version for say IGTV, a vertical version and Adobe Premiere Rush makes it really easy to create multiple versions. So for now, we're gonna leave that and we're gonna go back to our edit. And now notice that it's called rings now. So there's home button. This is undo. If we say we did something we didn't like, we moved something where we didn't want it. Like, oh, boo boo, hit undo, which is super helpful. Use that all the time. And this is in the top right here. That button is to export it and it gives you the ability to change some settings. We'll talk about that at the end. And in the top right is our ability to give feedback, which I never do that, they're not gonna listen. And these numbers here, they tell us where we are in our cut, where we are on our timeline. Notice it's at zero, because we're at the very beginning. As we scroll through this, oops, as we scroll through this, notice that the numbers change. And see this number on the bottom, 341.17? That's three minutes, 41 seconds, 17 frames long. That's how long our entire sequence is. So if we go to the end of it, we see that the top numbers and the bottom numbers pretty much match because we are at the end of the sequence there and that's how long the sequence is. All right, next we have our viewer. This is what is actually existing and playing in our timeline. This is our finished product we're looking at. When it's done, it'll be the finished product or our work in progress as we go. Now, one thing I love about Adobe Premiere Rush is the fact that it gives you the ability to do more fine-tuned controlling. Now, these are our buttons that allow us to play this. The middle one is simply play, right? Now, to the left and right of that, we have the ability to go one frame at a time, so we can get very precise by hitting these buttons, back a frame and forward a frame. Let's us create very precision cuts. Now we also have these outside buttons that allow us to jump to the next edit. That's the next clip that we put in. So we hit next, next, next. See how it's jumping ahead there? And prior, 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 prior. All right, so that's what those buttons do, super helpful. This is actually our timeline. Now, this is what it looks like by default, but we can change it a little bit. Here's another thing that I love about Rush, the ability to change what our timeline looks like. If you see this button here that looks like a vertical line and three horizontal lines, click on that, and boom, we have a real time that looks like the timeline in Adobe Premiere. This is amazing training wheels for getting your real editing game on. Not that you can't edit real stuff here because you can, it's pretty advanced, the things you can do with this, you may never need to use another program, but this gets you ready if you want to go to the next level. And this gives us the ability to see and add content to multiple tracks of audio here below and multiple tracks of video here above. And if you have multiple tracks and you want to say, hide this track, I can hit this little eyeball button and then that's, that's invisible. And I can hide the sound too by hitting that little icon there. So you don't hear this, wait, it's already hidden, so don't do that. There's no sound down here. If there, was sound, if there was sound down here, I could hit this button and I could mute that audio. So that's a super cool feature, the ability to have multiple tracks of audio and video for adding sound effects and music and cool video effects above and titles. So super, super helpful. Now we're gonna get rid of that for now so we keep it super simple. And this button here to the right, we've already messed with, that shows us our project assets. This button here to the left, the far left, the plus sign, that lets us add additional assets, more video, more photos, more audio, more sound effects. You simply hit plus and you choose how you wanna do it. Capture lets you record it with your phone, which is awesome. Not gonna cover that. Title, we'll do that in a minute. Media, that's if we wanted to add anything from any of these sources. And we're gonna go ahead and add music in a little bit, but we're not doing that yet. Next, we have this button here that allows us to change the aspect ratio of the video. Right now, this is a horizontal, it's, a, it's landscape mode. What if we wanted to make a vertical version for IGTV? You click that, choose portrait, and boom. Now we've got a vertical version. We'd have to tweak to make it fit, but it's pretty easy to do. Or if we wanted a square version for, say, Instagram feed, boom, that easy. 
This is why you would need multiple sequences. If you had your finished sequence for YouTube and you didn't export it yet, you'd want to create a duplicate of that one and then modify it so that it works for IGTV or Instagram feed or whatever format you want. Okay, let's go put it back to landscape and continue our journey here. I've got a quick question for you. Are you editing your videos on your phone or tablet or on your computer? Go ahead and post that in the comments below. I wanna see. We add titles with this. We'll talk about that a little later. We add transitions here. Both audio and video, they're pretty minimal. We'll cover those in a minute. Color, this is an advanced feature, somewhat advanced. Speed, that is something that is new. It allows us to speed up or slow down a clip. That did not exist in the original version. It exists now, it's awesome. And then audio, you click on that and allows you to adjust your volume levels. It's got some automatic features like ducking where it will automatically duck out the audio when somebody is talking. So generally I go with manual settings but we'll cover that in a minute. And then transform, what's transform? That lets us zoom in on a clip or move a clip. By that I mean, we've got a wide, you know, a medium shot of him here, we wanted to go tighter. You would simply go over here to scale width. The lock, the scale is locked right here. So if I scale the width, it's gonna scale the height as well. So I click on this guy, the slider appears and now I can zoom in on Mike. It's like, whoa, now I can zoom in and then I can adjust him with the vertical position, got that slider again, I can slide him down, looks good to the right, or I could maybe center if I wanted to, and move him over, and then boom, you can do all that stuff with these buttons down here, like how do I get back, Trevor? You just go like this, hit that left arrow, and then we have the ability to see all of our tools that are available. I don't want him zoomed in yet, so I'm gonna hit this button, remember, undo, 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 now he looks back to where he was. So that's transform. Next we have the scissors for making a cut, Cutting is what you do to trim the stuff that you don't want. If I wanted to say, by the way, to zoom in and out on the timeline, two fingers, zoom in, zoom out. I do that all the time in this program and in Premiere, always so I can, I can get my bearings, see what's going on. By the way, if you're zoomed in a whole bunch and you want to zoom out, you double tap here in the gray and it shows your, your entire timeline. Again, I use that all of the time. Things get messed up down here, remember? You just hit this arrow on the left, so you can go, oh, there's my tools. So to create a cut, you zoom in, and this is this is how you edit. This is the most important tool in this whole thing. You want to choose where you want a clip to start and where you want it to end. And so we'll do that in a second precisely, but for now, let's say I wanted to start right here. I just hit the cut tool. I click on the piece I want to delete, and I hit the trash can right there, and then boom, it's gone. Not ready to do that yet, so I'm gonna hit undo. And next we have this plus sign here, I'm gonna undo one more time. This plus sign, what if I wanted another copy of this for whatever reason to make a special effect? I wanted two copies of this particular clip. This is where this orange is around, that's one piece of media that I shot. I hit plus and boom, now I have two of them. I can do things with them if I want to. And hit undo, I don't want it. And those are all the buttons. Once you've mastered those, you've pretty much got it down, right? So editing isn't so much about the software, it's more about what you do with the software. Once you learn how to edit with one program, learning on another program is going to be very easy. Learning the software is easy. Learning how to make great cuts that tell a story is the hard part. But for today, we're gonna to talk about the easy part, which is the software and Premiere Rush. So let's go ahead and create a cut with this. We're gonna, we're gonna make an edit here. Here we go. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna listen Oh, by the way, one other thing we didn't talk about is if I hold this and let go, it gives me the ability to expand the audio. So now I can see the audio big down here. These are the waveforms. And these waveforms get bigger when things get louder, like Mike is talking louder. I use waveforms all the time so I can find where to create edits. Super, super helpful, super important. So we're going to zoom in a little bit, listen to Mike and see where we want this edit to start. We go to the beginning and hit play. And action. Hey, 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 how we doing? So you want to learn how to do a muscle. So we want right before his slap, right? So let's go, we're gonna, we're gonna, by the way, if you click in the gray, it's easier to scroll. If you click up here, you can sometimes scroll and sometimes it thinks you want to do other things. And notice I'm scrolling and moving this around and nothing's changing here. So for scrolling, and these are things you learn by doing. You start messing with those like, wait, Trevor did that, it's not working. It's because you can scroll down here and it's always gonna scroll down here, right? So. Let's find where that edit is. Boom. So we want, right before he says, hey, 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 that's where he's gonna start to talk and give us this, hey, hey, hey. So I'm just gonna hit these scissors here and that place to cut there, I can zoom in so you can see it. 
right? I'm going to click on that one and hit delete. Now, by the way, you can create a cut to make edits or you can adjust the beginning or end of a clip by using this feature here. When you have the fat orange lines, you click and hold and now I can slide this and adjust the beginning and end of a clip like that. But it's cumbersome and I don't like using it. You can't get as precise. I would much rather do it the other way that I've been showing you. We're gonna make one more cut and then I'm gonna go through this whole thing really quickly in fast motion and show you other things. So here we go. Let's see if that worked. Our cut worked. Let's hit play. Hey, 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 how we doing? So you want to learn how to do a muscle up starting off. We want two things. You should be able to do 10 pull ups and about 10 ring dips um, on the uh, You're right. He messed up right there. So we're just going to go where he where the good stuff was. So 10 pull ups and 10 ring dips, ring dips. So right about there's the end. I want to end it there. So I'm going to make a cut. And then this is the stuff where he messes up. So we're going to skip that. You can see he's messed up, messed up. He's starting over again. Let's see how he does. And let's see if this is the next section, because this is going to be the part right here that we want to get rid of. This is the good part, right? That open. And then let's see where he picks up and does it right. Uh, first you off, you want to acquire a false grip. That's what Okay. So he says, uh, first you want to acquire a false grip and I'm talking over him a little bit. So let's just say you want to acquire a false grip. Let's see where that is. If you want to acquire a false grip, that Okay, so that's going to be good enough for our purposes. You want to acquire a false grip. So we're going to make a cut right there. And hit the scissors and delete this and boom. Now we'll see if this works. You play them back to back. If you want to acquire a false grip, that's where the ring sits below our palm and almost in contact with our wrist. Boom. So that's great, right? So I'm going to edit the rest of this right now in fast motion. And then, I'm going to then we'll talk about the next section. First, I'm going to get Mike, who did this all in one take. We recorded him speaking the whole time. Then we recorded the B-roll, the cover shots, where he talks about, where I'm sorry, where he shows the false grip or he shows the different aspects of it. So let's first get the cut down. I'll do that in fast motion. Okay, I've got Mike speaking all done, him explaining how to do a ring muscle up. Now let us choose the B-roll shots, the cover shots. When he says false grip, let's show a false grip. So we're going to choose the portion of the false grip we want to show. Let's just scroll right. Yeah, it's probably okay to show the beginning of that and see he shows it and then he jumps down. So that's probably the end right there. I'm going to cut the end, get rid of that section. All right, so I think we want starting right about here maybe. And we're going to cut there, delete this section, hit the trash can, not the duplicate button. And then we have this, we have this great shot right here of him showing us the false grip. But what do we have that we don't want? A little bit of background noise. How do you get rid of that background noise? You double tap on the audio. It opens up the audio pane on the bottom here. And we just want to hit this mute button here because we want to hear him talking, not background noise. Now, how do I get this on top? This is when this bottom left button comes in, this vertical line with three horizontal lines, you click on that. And now we can see these additional tracks, which makes it a little easier, a little better reference points for, for dragging this stuff around. Now we want to move this clip of Mike showing the false grip by clicking on it. And once you click on it and it, it goes big for a second, it didn't do it. And this is kind of important that you get this. When you are doing things with your fingers, it's a little more cumbersome than using a keyboard. So you got to really understand how the software works. For this software, you can't move things around until it pops big for a second. Watch this. I'm going to click on it and see how it popped big. See how it pops? After it pops, I can move it. So popped. Now I'm going to move it up, move it up on track two. Actually went to track three. And I'm going to just click on it again and slide it over where I need it to be. So I'm going to click didn't pop, so it won't move. So hold it till it pops. And it's, I need to zoom in a little bit for this to work a little better. So I'm going to click. There it goes. It popped. I'm going to slide it over. And notice I could use a little more room with this stuff in the way here. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse all those tracks. So all I see is the one I want. I know he says false grip over here somewhere. So let's see where that is exactly. 10 ring dips. If you want to acquire a false grip, that's where the ring sits below our palm and all. Okay. So I know it's right there. We stopped at the false grip. So I'm going to click on this. It popped. I'm going to move it over here and let's see what happens. Grip. That's where the ring sits below our palm and almost in contact with our wrist like this. After we acquire a false grip, we want Boom. to be so able to do it. That's perfect, right? 
So I'm going to do that for all the rest of these clips in fast motion, so you don't have to watch through it, but that's how you do it. You just find the clip you want to do, you trim it, and you put it over where he's talking about it. That's B-roll. Those are cover shots or B-roll, and that's, you know, slightly more advanced, but that's something that's going to make your videos more watchable and more compelling and look a little bit more polished. Now, let me do this really fast for you. Okay, now that we've got the B-roll added, we've got four shots on top of him talking. Now we're going to add a little title because he shows us the final step here. Let's add a title in there and see how to do that. You simply go to the bottom and choose title. You've got a bunch of options down here that have got motion and stuff involved. Let's just go ahead and choose one that looks kind of cool. How about stylish intro? This, we can have a title actually on top of the video or just have it by itself. We're going to have it by itself. How do you do that? How do you have just black and title black in the background you click on it and you just simply remember it's got to pop zoom in pop baby pop see it popped now i can slide it down here and boom it's going to go right there stylish welcome we don't want that we want it to say something else so let's click on it and delete those words and choose putting it together once we have the words in, we can change the background. The way you do that is we have multiple layers. We have the text on top and we have the color behind it. So here we have stylish welcome. This is the top layer. We want to change the shape, which is on the bottom. So we select shape and now we can change the color fill of the shape simply by clicking on it and clicking on the color here and choosing something else. Let's choose that purplish kind of color instead. Click out of it and then boom, now we have stylish welcome popping up in purple instead of pink. Right now, this is too long. I don't want it to be that long. I want it to be shorter. So we're going to shorten it. How do you do that? Remember the other way to trim things besides cutting is to click and hold. I'm going to click and hold and drag this back a little bit. Okay, let's check the duration of the title. See how it looks. Look like this. And then now we want to show him doing a ring muscle up and boom, that one already trimmed. So that looks good. Now we got another guy doing another ring muscle up. So let's show Robert doing one and maybe we'll start him back here in the Superman pose. So we'll cut, hit delete. And let me add a couple more guys and we'll pick up there and add some music. All right, now we've got our cut. It is 50 seconds long. At the very end of this, we'll play it for you. What is missing? We got We've got Mike talking. We've got guys showing examples at the end. We got a title in there. We got B-roll. We got everything we need except music. To add music, you hit the plus sign at the bottom left. We choose media. We choose audio. And from there, we choose songs. And we go into our, our audio library, basically your iTunes library on your phone and wherever that lives on an Android. And we can sample these, see which one do we like. Uh -oh. I like that one. I hit the checkbox here. That's number one of one we're bringing in. You hit add at the bottom and it's going to add the whole song to the project underneath. So let's see how this works. And it's, it put it right where I had the playhead. I don't want it there. I want it at the beginning. So I'm going to click it, see how it popped. I'm going to drag it to the beginning and let's see if that works. Hey, 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 how we doing? So you want to learn how to do a muscle up starting off. We want two things. Okay. I think it works great, except that it's a little bit too loud. So we're going to double tap it opens up this at the bottom it has auto volume forget that you want control hit clip volume here we're gonna lower it down to like i don't know 26. let's see how that sounds things you should be able to do 10 pull-ups and about 10 Maybe ring better. dips if you want to acquire a false grip that's where the ring sits below our palm and almost in contact with our wrist like this after we acquire a false grip we okay i feel like that's pretty good level you want to be able to hear him clearly but you still want to hear the music and then at the end where we are not having him talk. We want the music to get louder and plus we want the music to end over here at the very end. So what do you do? Let's go to this previous edit, which is right there. We're going to select our razor blade tool and we're going to cut the music there and delete it. Now we could do tricks to make it fancy and have the music end right, but I just want to keep this super simple for you. And what if you want the levels to go louder? Well, here's a trick that I use in Hollywood. The easiest way to make that happen is you go right here where he's done talking and we, we click on the audio only, you hit the scissors, you make a cut, and then for this music, we make it louder. Let's make it like, I don't know, 65 or something, see how that sounds. Boom, so now that is quiet music and that is loud music because we're just covering these guys doing these tricks. And oh, look at this. If you look at this, 
expand the audio, we see that we've got noise happening here, right? We don't want those guys making grunty sounds. We just want to hear the music. So how do you get rid of that? You double tap it, hit mute, double tap, mute, double tap, mute. And the more you use this, the faster you'll get. Let's see if this works. Where he's done talking, the music gets loud. Let's see if it works. A kip. A kip will look like this. Okay, and right now, that's a little glitch that it does every once in a while. So we want to make sure that it's going to work. And it might have been because I had those selected. But I'm going to deselect them and make sure that's selected. And hit play again. Yeah, a kip will look like this. Is here with you. That was a little jarring. Let's do a quick transition here. So we click on this guy. And you go over here and choose... Transition and cross dissolve is the only transition available for audio. So we hit cross dissolve and you can see that it added one there. See that little thing right there? That's the cross dissolve. We can make, if we click on it, we can make a little longer or shorter if we want. Click on duration and we can say, hey, get longer or get shorter. You want it to be pretty abrupt. So we're going to just keep it at around 62. And we're going to test this one more time. Need is here with you. And let's see how this works. With a little bit of a kip. The kip will look like this. What's wrong with that? It says stylish welcome still. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. We're going to click on it and click up here. And delete those words and choose putting it all together one more time. Putting it all together. Hit done. And now let's see if this works. Okay, and then the last thing you want to do, since we didn't really end the music correctly, like the very end of the song we didn't put here, there's tricks to make that happen, but we're not covering that now. We're just going to add a transition here. So hit transition, hit cross dissolve, hit put it there. I want that to be longer, so I'm going to make the duration, I don't know, 141. How's that? And then the music will fade out at the end. Now let's take our final step and export this. You hit this top button here and choose export. Now I just let it go with the default and by default it will export it at the settings that I shot the video at which was 24 frames a second in HD. If you want to export it differently you can choose additional settings by doing this. And look it went actually pretty dang quick. So you can upload it to one of any of these platforms right from here. We're not going to do that right now. Let me show you how you can change. You hit quality settings automatic and it look at that it's 1920 by 1080 24 frames a second stereo high quality we could have used one of these other settings but usually the default setting is going to be fine remember i talked about changing the aspect ratio so you could upload it to something like igtv the way you would do that is you would hit this icon on the bottom left next to the plus sign and you would duplicate your clip there's rings we're going to duplicate it made another copy called sequence one that one, we're going to rename it and call it IGTV, IGTV, rename. Up here at the top, we have IGTV. To open this, we simply hit these three dots and choose open, boom, and then click the X. And now look at IGTV is open. So we can make the IGTV version. How do you do that? You hit this little icon down here, change it to portrait, and boom, it's all IGTV size, except that look, it doesn't fit. How do you make it fit? We use the transform feature. We have to do that for each clip. I'm not going to do it all, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So you just hit transform and we hit this scale width button and we make it bigger till it fills the frame. And then we go over here and we change the horizontal position by sliding it over a little bit so he's centered. You do that with every clip because if you don't, look at that, the next clip is going to be not blown up for IGTV. So you have to do it with every clip so it's centered. And then boom, you would just export it again. That's all there is to it. Now let me show you the entire sequence played out after it's rendered. Here you go. Hey, 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 how we doing? So you want to learn how to do a muscle up. Starting off, we want two things. You should be able to do 10 pull ups and about 10 ring dips. If you want to acquire a false grip, that's where the ring sits below our palm and almost in contact with our wrist, like this. After we acquire a false grip, we want to be able to do a kip. A kip is going from a Superman position to a hollow position. It'll look like this. After we have our kip down, we want to be able to pull through the middle and into our dip position. 
that'll look like this. After we're able to pull through the middle and get into the dip position, we want to pop out of the dip with a little bit of a kip. The kip will look like this. Boom, that's it. You should be a pro at editing in Adobe Premiere Rush right now. Don't forget to check out my free webinar at videosecretswebinar.com so you can learn to crush it with video. Also, post in the comments below what software you're currently using to edit your videos. If you want to learn more about growing your business with video, check out that playlist right there. Don't forget to subscribe right down there. I cannot wait to see the stories you have to share.